Victoria 3 is coming this October 25th and it looks absolutely epic. It looks fantastic and I for one am excited to see what potential this game could deliver on October the 25th. And I'm excited because I will be able to recreate stories and alternate histories where it was never possible to do so. I would create a grand history of a French empire conquering all of Europe trying to reclaim Napoleon's legacy. I would be recreating an Indian Empire that would shackle off the British. I would basically do so much in this game that I am really excited and I'm going to explain my reasons why I think this game is going to be really good. And I'm simply going to be telling you my reasons as to why I'm excited for Victoria 3. But why I think it is going to be another great hit from Paradox, in my opinion. Now when I mean great hit, I mean in the sense that this game isn't based on warfare so much. Now I've been reading about the valid criticism, that is that warfare doesn't make the overall aspect of the game just yet, but the economy is the main driving force throughout this game. And I think that's a really good decision being made there. Not that warfare hasn't been taken down. I think warfare needs to be implemented in some sort of feature, DLC or something like that. But when it comes to the economy, it's all based on the population of your nation. And the population mechanic makes sense. It makes sense for this time period. Because what drove the Industrial Revolution? It drove economies, it drove business, it had investment, but that investment was due to colonization, of course, and you are creating your own story within this game, of course, and you manage populations by buildings that basically produce or consume major goods, and that'll be your peasant, your laborers, your clerks, your aristocrats, your clergymen, your peasants, and for example, you could have private owned buildings that have the owners that only collect that profits. They may reinvest or they could reinvest it somewhere else or, or at luxuries or driving up demand for exotic imports. So for example, if I wanted to build a building of sugar or of bananas and that fruit or sugar is not available within my country, therefore those wealthy owners could basically show out the demand. I think the majority of the economics in this game is supply and demand. And I would really like to see a bit more unique economic features put into this game. Also, you'll be managing different types of population. So let's say you could manage the interests of the poor, of the middle class, of the working class. I like the fact that it's focusing on the population, it's making you more immersed into your nation. And for me, what I would really like to do is when I get the game, as in when I first play it, I will play the Ottomans because I want to revive the Ottoman Empire. Because the Ottoman Empire is that it really needs reforms if it is to become an economic powerhouse or it will remain weak and the European powers will come and basically run the affairs of the Ottoman Empire for themselves. And that's what basically happened within history. I want to change that or I want to do in 1857 is when I want to basically liberate the whole of India put it back under the Mahatma rule or whatever other various princes that used to rule over there or maybe even under the Mughals and then I would basically build a new Indian Empire that would be on the scale of what the reforms of the Meiji era were for Japan or I would play as France in 1870, but if I am to trigger the overthrow of the Bourbons, then basically I would build up France and reform the army so that we would be able to never prevent, well, prevent pressure from forming into the unification of Germany. These are the basic eras I would love to play. and. I would say this to the and I would say this to the Victoria 3 developers. Please make a steampunk DLC or a theme or make it as a free update. Because steampunk for Victoria 3 I think would be a really really cool 
concept. I think it would be really, really fantastic. And Victoria 3 does seem to have a lot of political features. You know, a good nation of farmers could champion the rural folk, or a group of coal mining machinists might join the trade unions for more safety regulations, etc. I do wonder is how much trade union strikes are you going to get within this game? And then, of course, your economy is basically run by these factors. And population is the main focus of this game, I believe. I do think that uh, warfare does need to come back in some sort of way, in some sort of form. Warfare needs to be focused on an area where the amount of money that you invest within your armies also, ref also reflects the growing progress of your economy. For example, let's take the Spanish Empire. The Spanish Empire is, at this point, it's not that great. And Spain doesn't really have its big empire. And Spain could recruit troops. But the army that it's going to recruit will be very, very limited. You won't have access to a big massive army. Because politics in Spanish history during this time is really horrendous, to say the least. And Napoleon's invasion of Spain didn't really help. You also have the Carlist Wars in between. But you know, there's also interest groups, there's, there is, there's laws, institutions, there's a lot of things that you can do within this game. And I really love the options that are available. You've got government administrations, and yes, you can't rely on private industry, because the bureaucracy has to function, taxes must be collected, trains and ships have to depart on time. You have to and make sure that you keep attention to all of this detail. There's laws and there's... There's a whole bunch of things. And all I can say is is that there are many features within this game that will take some time to develop, to understand, to learn. Now, there's this... But even so, from what I have read of Victoria 3, I'm really, really excited that it's a game that has strategy in almost now in every single aspect. In terms of your prestige, your research, your trade, your technology, the way you conduct diplomacy. And I really love the fact that you have these vibrant, growing cities. And you can see how your cities grow and develop. Pretty much like maybe in Rome 2 where you could see your cities expand and do similar things. But I'll be honest. I am basically one of those guys that I appreciate the complex... I'll be honest. I appreciate the complexity of Victoria 3. I admit that I will not understand the game within the first few hours of the gameplay. I will basically come into this with a new understanding. New understanding meaning that I'm going to play Victoria 3 for the first time. I'm going to go in totally blind. I will try and understand what this game is about. And to be honest, I think that the Paradox devs have been really helpful in making all of these diaries and writing out all of this information. And I'm going to go into Victoria 3 thinking, let's see how it goes. Let me learn from my mistakes. Because Paradox games are complex. They do need a bit of time to learn. And I really want to give this game not only the time, not only the, the, the attention, but to give it the appreciation I think it truly deserves. I think it could be the ultimate grand strategy game in, not in terms of warfare, but in terms of a different scale, in terms of immersiveness, in terms of different whatever you want to call it. I think Victoria 3 is going to be a great strategy game. I truly wish to play this game and I want to replay I just want to play the Ottomans, I want to play the French, I, I want to play Japan. I want to leave Japan out of the Shogunate period and go straight into the Meiji period. I want to build my empire, you know. I want to do so many things. There is of course one complaint that I do, well two complaints. One, that warfare needs to basically be expanded upon, it needs to really reflect the warfare of that time period, and two, most of the features of, let's say, the India or Japan or different factions will not be fleshed out right now. There might be DLC-specific periods. Uh, well, for example, 
let's say you have an Indian DLC, or you have maybe the 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 rising sun for the Japanese Empire, or you could have these time periods that give more mission trees or events to these nations, such as for example in EU Force, the new Northern Wars update DLC or whatever. So that's what I'd like to see expanded upon, and just honestly, I'm. I'm talking now with so much passion about Victoria 3. I think I'm going to definitely enjoy this game. I hope you guys try out the game and see what you think of it. So, don't forget to leave a like, share, comment and subscribe. And I will definitely be covering Victoria 3 in the future. Stay tuned.